Hey folks, Marty Nowicki with Impact Snap. Today's video, we're gonna talk about things you can do indoors all winter to get your game ready for next spring. I'm fortunate right now in the studio that I'm in there are high ceilings. A lot of people uh, may only have eight or nine foot high ceilings at home. That being said, uh, grip down on like a pitching wedge or a sand wedge. Those are your shortest clubs in the bag. One hand on the grip, one hand on the metal. Love waist high to waist high swings where you sense that your arms are stretching. Always good to both establish our radius Two long arms after impact. If you happen to be able to film yourself this winter, this is really one of my primary checkpoints. You can really determine how good of a ball hitter people are by how long are both arms there. Are they crisscrossed and rolled? Are they bent or chicken winged? How close is the butt end of the golf club to me? So from a uh, gripping down standpoint, if I poked that right into my uh, belly button and grip further down. Now both arms are long. I can actually practice my takeaway where at first parallel the club head is going to be right in line with the hands. First parallel also for a bigger swing, full length swing, uh, shouldn't see a lot of arm bending and should see about 20 to 25, maybe 30 degrees of turn at first parallel. So for drill sake, if I stick that into my belly button, uh, uh, stretch my arms down the shaft, my hands are down the shaft. If I'm going waist high to waist high for the drill, no, there won't, won't be any arm bend. And that's really geared to get my body to start conforming to the length of my arms. From here, now we want to start getting into some leg work. That's when I'm going to take my pelvis and allow it to crank. When I, when I do crank that, that's gonna allow my chest or my shoulders, my clavicles technically, to then make that fuller turn. So it's like arms only with about 20 to 25 degrees of uh, shoulder turn at first parallel. Then we're gonna take the pelvis and the knees and let them, let them go. That's gonna allow the top part to actually turn more. Practicing your takeaway, <coughs> practicing your takeaway and your backswing can really improve you over the course of the winter. We want to really avoid wrist roll or arm turning, arm bending early. Uh, those are things that are going to constantly be changing that club face. So it's like two straight arms to first parallel, let the pelvis turn, complete the backswing. Two straight arms to first parallel, pelvis turns. That's going to help me also with uh, some flexibility. So if you're uh, needing to get more flexible over the course of the winter, that would be a great, great start. Waist high, waist high. These are great so that you don't hit the ceiling in your home. The only way I can get to waist high on the through swing with two straight arms is I need my knees and my pelvis to turn and then I need my pelvis to actually push forward. As I turn, both legs are now pushing, standing up. I like to use uh, the image of a basket, shooting a basketball that I wouldn't be shooting from down here. I'd actually straighten my legs, allow my pelvis to push up and forward and that will then increase my range of motion. If the arms and club are moving faster than the knees and the pelvis, this is gonna to start to bend in right around impact. So we really need to be aware of waist high, flex the knees, turn the knees, pelvis, push up, allowing the pelvis to raise and turn. That's gonna then increase your range of motion. Uh, drill standpoint, 
If I'm rehearsing a full swing, you'll notice a couple things. Number one, the arms are connected up at the armpit, meaning I don't need my elbow on my body for me to hold that golf club in. Do that with a couple of tees, put them under your armpits, and stretch your arms out. I also want to note, uh, if I'm chipping or pitching a ball, we would see earlier arm bend, okay? So arm bend early is great for chipping, pitching, shots around the greens. Uh, full swing though, at first parallel, the right arm does not bend ideally. And then from there, the pelvis will turn. So again, connect the armpits, club in the uh, belly button, first parallel. You can see that there's some space between my arm and my body. And what we'll see when we look at great tour players, there's first parallel on the backswing. Here's first parallel on the downswing. And again, the transition allows me to pick up this angle, what we like to think of as lag, for lack of a better word. And that angle allows me to then hit the ground after the point of the ball. If the arms stay too straight on the downswing, unless I have a massive amount of turn or a lot of raising, odds are I'm going to hit the ground a little bit too soon. So it's like reach, pull. Reach, right arm moves in front, left wrist creates a little angle. No different than hockey, baseball, lacrosse, reach, pull. So my knees, pelvis, uh, chest have to turn, pelvis has to move up and forward in order for these arms to stay nice and long and keep the club attached. If I don't come out of my posture or if I don't turn my knees or pelvis, I can't go anywhere past here. That's when the arms will start to bend. So I need those knees and pelvis to turn and the pelvis to actually raise up. For Impact Snap, I'm Marty Nowicki. Thanks for watching. Please like and share this video. Leave your comments down below. That helps us to create more content for you.